at home and Lucas here. So today we're talking about the Dyson V11 Extra. Yes, people, I finally got my hands on a Dyson vacuum. I've lived on this planet for a long time and never actually owned a Dyson vacuum. So I'm going into this review with very, very high expectations. I'm expecting basically the best of the best of the best. This is a stick vacuum, so it's gonna work perfect on hardwood floors, but I'm gonna be putting this to the test on carpet. Yes, I wanna figure out, is this thing gonna replace my regular vacuum that plugs into the wall and is just a standard great vacuum? Or is this thing going to basically give me a headache and be something that I may have to return? So in this review, we're gonna be doing a hands-on with the box, quick unboxing and first impressions on said Dyson vacuum. After that, I'm gonna be putting this bad boy to the Atom Lucas test to figure out, is it something you should buy or maybe skip altogether? I'm here for you, so I have to waste your time buying and returning. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it. Go ahead and get this thing open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, just imagine I snap my fingers. This is everything that came in the box. Okay, I already had an existing vacuum right here with the two holes and the scrape mark right down there. So I'm just gonna be using the existing hole here to put that on just like that, putting a second hole down there and then the Dyson should cover up that right there. And they gave you some they give you some really nice screws and mounting hardware, so that's great. I'll be able to anchor this in the wall. Because this Dyson vacuum is definitely heavy. And that's how it should look on your wall. You of course have to snap this part in here. You push it in there, you push it in the middle, locks it into place. Now we're gonna run our power cable up into here and then lock it down with that, and then we should be good to go. Okay, and that's how it looks with the power cable going down. The power cable is not very long. It actually barely fits. Well, I have a little bit extra room, but yeah, power cable's not that long, so take note of that. Also, you may want to measure from the floor up if you don't want yours floating like mine is. I don't mind it floating. Um, but that's how it looks on the wall right there. Quick first look. Okay, let's talk about some of the pros and cons of the way you charge this. So the pros are this thing is going to be charged relatively every time you come over to it. The con though is you have to basically drop this thing down. I mean, you, ba you can drop it in pretty straightforward, but you just have to know that there is a charging port and there is a charging cable going into a charging port so it's not as quick to drop down as I would like I would like maybe some magnetic pins or something some pads and some charging pins that would be absolutely amazing then you wouldn't have to even think about the fact that there is something in there that could get uh, bumped even though this thing is guided in um, so it's gonna take a few minutes before I get used to the fact that there's a a protruding charging cable going into the bottom of this thing. Um, but yeah, so it is pretty much grab and go and charge. You don't have to worry about plugging it in. So that is cool. But I kind of wish just for my own sanity that they had a different way of doing the charging. Um, of course, if you didn't have the thing mounted on your wall, you would need to just plug it straight in manually. So. That is probably why they do it either or. It's not a all-in-one setup. Okay, now we got a real world scenario. Bunch of popcorn on the carpet right here. So we're gonna put this bad boy to the test. Okay, that's pretty cool. I did a slow pass and you could see it literally did not leave any kernels. Well, there's one little piece right there, but that's pretty amazing. Let's do one more pass right here. That was not even that slow. Shot one out, so it missed yeah. one. Let's go ahead and check the damage. It's looking pretty good. 
That's pretty amazing. So two things are happening here that's absolutely amazing. Um, it has massive suction. I have it on the pro mode or the highest mode. And it also leans towards the back, allowing the front to pop over pieces of popcorn or things that are a little bit taller than itself. So it really is like kind of an aggressive uh, vacuum. And it even sucked up something um, that I don't know if I wanted it to. So I'm going to have to take a look at what's in here. I heard a piece of plastic or something go in there so it really did a phenomenal job of tackling <laughs> that popcorn uh pretty easily i'm i'm normally a slow and a multi uh pass kind of guy and i could easily spend another few minutes and make sure that every last little tiny piece is cleaned up but just for a quick pass with this thing that's amazing that's the power of this thing for sure Okay, so I got my microwave right here. It vents out up to the ceiling. I don't know if you could see it on camera, but this whole section right here, basically all right here is completely covered in dust and maybe a little bit of grease. So I'm not sure if this attachment is gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, it looks like I can clean it really easily if it doesn't work. And I don't see myself using this for anything else. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to clean my popcorn ceiling. Okay, just finished cleaning the ceiling with this bad boy and I have to admit it really did a phenomenal job. There was a lot more gunk up there than I thought and it actually came off into these bristles and I ended up washing the bristles out. It didn't really get a lot sucked into the actual vacuum but it definitely did a phenomenal job. I had it on boost mode of course because you have to have it on boost mode if you're trying to do some crazy stuff like that. But nonetheless, whatever this thing is made for, it, it worked perfect to clean the popcorn ceiling. So five out of five stars for sure. Okay, so I was just messing around with some of the wall mount arrangements. So I didn't like the fact the hose came all the way down or the shaft. So I actually just stuck it right there and I find that to be so much more satisfying than seeing just this stick vacuum with the stick hanging straight down. So that is actually how I might do it for now. It is gonna take two steps. You're gonna have to pull the stick off, pop it in, and then away you go. But I think for accessing the trash can and everything, that's just a little bit better. You can also take the bottom part off and just have the stick there. I do wish that this was a little bit wider right here because I can't actually put that attachment on here where I actually would want to. Um, so that's a little bit annoying, but nonetheless, that is really cool. You can mess around with the wall mount. Okay, so I did some popcorn sucking up, which I showed you earlier. I did some more in my garage, some stale popcorn, and then some more in the house. And this thing is completely clogged. It is uh, clogged deep down in there. There you go, you can see that popcorn down in there. Um, I've been sort of tapping it to try to get it to pop out. It won't pop out. I don't know how to take the filters out. It do they don't just turn and pop out. Um, very confused. I've never had a <laughs> vacuum in my life get clogged because of popcorn. So what's going on, Dyson? <laughs> this is hilarious. So I'm gonna do something kind of funny. I just slapped that right onto the bottom there and I'm gonna to try to clean my stairs with it. Um, there's probably a better attachment, but I wanna just see if this full blown vacuum on the bottom here will actually do the job of cleaning the stairs. So let's go ahead and give it a shot.
Okay, so it definitely did a good job of cleaning the stairs. It is uh, on the heavy side and I definitely got some trigger finger fatigue for sure. And it is a little bit heavy. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what it did for the stairs. So the first thing I noticed is that it wasn't able to clean back into that crack right there or on the edges. So this thing is definitely not the best stair cleaner, but if you're just trying to go and get a very quick clean, that was fast and it did a really good job. Okay, let's take a quick minute to talk about how you use this thing as a vacuum and how well it actually functions. So one thing is it's able to go over bumps like that pretty easily. Um, it definitely performs completely different on carpet versus on hardwood and that makes a lot of sense. You're like, of course it does. Um, but one thing I noticed is that if you're trying to be super nimble with this thing, it's not as uh, nimble as I would like personally. So on boost mode, it has so much suction down here that it kind of takes a little bit of pressure and a little bit of force to get this thing to move forward. And because basically you're pushing down onto these tiny little wheels down here, it just makes for a slightly difficult uh, job. Now, if you have it on medium right here, it moves a little bit quicker through the carpet and it's not as bad. Um, another thing I noticed, if, if you're like me and you like to make a double pass, it actually does a phenomenal job of allowing you to get really precisely into the next line uh, and it does a good job of that so that's definitely an A plus in my book um, so the ability to maneuver this thing around your house is going to be it's going to vary depending on your carpet depending on your hardwood whatever you're using it on it's not always the exact same uh, and it definitely takes a minute to learn also once again this is heavy this is not a lightweight uh, device it's definitely heavy it's ergonomical so it doesn't really hurt your wrist at all but you will get finger trigger fatigue for sure if you use this thing for 30 uh, to 40 minutes, uh, depending if you have it on eco mode, medium or boost, will determine how long you're gonna be using this thing. You can easily swap it from one hand to another, which is really cool. So it's definitely a very usable vacuum, but it definitely takes a minute to learn how to maneuver this thing around, and it just doesn't move as nimbly, like I keep saying, as possible. Here's a quick example. If you're coming up here to your baseboard, like I have here, and you're trying to turn, and get this thing to line up perfectly with it, it definitely is, when it's running, it's not as intuitive. So see, it actually started to slide this way. So as I was using it and trying to line it up, now of course I could straighten out and come straight like this and it would work perfectly, but like I said, there are a few times where you're gonna be using this where you go, ooh, it didn't perform as I wanted it to. It didn't get in the position that I wanted it to as quickly as I wanted it to and it kind of did its own thing for a second. So that's what I'm talking about when I say it's not as fluid and, and smooth and, and nimble as I would like normally. But other than that, it's definitely a phenomenal vacuum. Another thing is if you get it up high like this and you have it going and you push, it takes a lot of force to get it to move. So it really has that, it really has that a massive amount of suction and it really can cause you to actually bump into it a little bit. Okay, let's take a quick minute to talk about the suction of this bad boy. So this thing actually has some amazing suction power and it really picks up dust and debris from my carpet that I've just never experienced before. It is truly an, an amazing device and it almost seems like it's pulling dust out of the air through there. I don't know how or why, but I've cleaned this carpet so many times and I come back and there's just this amount pretty much every time of basically just fine 
dust particles and a little bit of you know carpet fibers and and pet hair and whatnot but this thing really does a phenomenal job it's almost like an air purifier for your carpet if that makes any sense it really pulls so much out uh, more than other vacuums i have to admit it really does a phenomenal job okay here we go we're going to be putting this vacuum to the test so we have some cereal right here we have some coffee beans right here and then we have some almost espresso ground coffee i have no worries about that other than maybe it flinging it around um, so we'll see how good the suction is for that i'm not really too worried about this i think it's going to be able to suck it up and get it nice and clean this is where i think we're going to run into trouble this vacuum is definitely low to the ground Okay, single pass and it's left some residue down below. So it definitely struggled to just pick that up. Okay, there you go. It did not even get it up on boost mode. I'm starting to think I might have stained my carpet. Let's try it one more time, going a different direction. Okay, there you go. I'm pretty sure that this vacuum actually spun some of the coffee into that carpet and stained it. Okay, there you go. Single pass. It did a actually pretty good job. Alright, so once again, it crushed it and left some debris, possibly is going to stain the carpet. Alright, let's go ahead and check the cup right here. So you can pretty much see everything in there kind of looking like the earth with different layers. Really did a good job. Okay, let's talk about the difference between a stick vacuum and a regular vacuum. And in my experience with the stick vacuum, I'm not really seeing much of a difference. This thing has enough suction to pull up a lot of the dust and debris, just like this one would. In fact, they kind of look similar. You have a big body at the bottom. You have a long stick right here with a handle. This thing has a handle with a long stick down there. So it's kind of similar in, in what it can do. Uh, this of course is a little bit bigger and it has a plug, but in my experience, this thing did probably 90% of what this thing could do. This thing may be able to pick up 10% more uh, debris and whatnot that's in your carpet. I don't know, but when I ran this through my carpet day in and day out, I was really surprised at how much dust and gunk that it would pick up and it actually blew me away. I was totally expecting that thing to be mainly hardwood floor and then some carpet, but no, we have pretty thick carpet and it did a phenomenal job. Also, that's my robot vacuum going right now. I have a lot of vacuums. Woo! So definitely passed the carpet test. I'm absolutely blown away with its ability. Okay, let's talk about battery life. So battery life was exactly as advertised. I was absolutely blown away at how well this did on medium. When you throw it onto boost, you're gonna use a little bit more juice and it's going to uh, run out of battery a little bit faster, but I never actually put it on eco mode. I just could not find myself using this on eco mode. I think if I had a bunch of hardwood floors and tile floors, I would throw it on eco mode if I needed to go like, <laughs> And vacuum a giant house maybe eco mode would be good but medium and boost is where i lived if i was going to do anything big like get popcorn i would throw it into boost um but most of the time it just landed in medium i just grabbed it went when you throw it into boost it definitely gets way louder so it's definitely a loud vacuum on boost and on medium it's actually quite quiet so that's how i could tell if I forgot to put on a boost by the volume. So battery life, really good, exactly as advertised. Uh, no, no shock there, really. I thought, yeah, it's probably gonna be close. This battery is massive and very heavy. <laughs>
Okay, I've been using this vacuum for long enough that I think I have a full star rating. And let's just start off with the overall package. So the wall mount is phenomenal. The way that it slots in there is actually really, really cool. And it's grown on me. I started off feeling like, oh no, I'm gonna crush that pin and it's gonna get broken. But now I just drop it in and trust every time that it's gonna work. You can also take the battery out of here. So if you have multiples, you could take this thing out and just drop a battery straight down in there, which is actually really cool. So if you have two batteries, you can have one charging while you're vacuuming part of your house. So that's actually really, really cool. Once I figured out that this pole fits perfectly back there, it changed the way this vacuum looked on the wall. It looks terrible with the pole just hanging out that far. And it's really uh, quite a big stick vacuum. So definitely take note of that. Um, for suction and, and build quality, I'm gonna give it five out of five stars. For overall use and functionality of this thing, I'm gonna give it a 4.6 star rating. I'm gonna say that it's not quite a five star vacuum in my mind, and I think that Dyson is a little bit overhyped. I think that the way that people look at Dyson is that they are the best of the best of the best, and there's nothing else better. But I think Dyson could improve in a lot of ways. I think that this vacuum is easily clogged, so take note of that. Um, I did have to clean out two clogs. A, one of them was a sticker, and the other one was actually some popcorn kernels that I sucked up uh, that just, clogged it right up. So for a vacuum with massive amounts of suction, I think they can improve the way that it pulls in debris and make it just a little bit better so it doesn't get, you know, clogged. All of their attachments are way over engineered and way overdone. I think that they've put way too much into these silly things that you're just gonna use maybe a couple times a year, if that, and most of them you're not gonna use at all. So they put in this insane engineering into just the silliest things that I just don't think people are gonna care about. Um, and that's where your money's going. You, This thing came with a bunch of attachments I'll never use. Um, I barely use that thing. I just basically use that for everything and that's it. So the attachments are phenomenally engineered and built, they're solid but <laughs> they're not, uh, they're, yeah, they're kind of, you know, silly, uh, which a lot of vacuum attachments are kind of silly. So highly recommend it to everyone out there that knows what they're buying. If you're new to buying a Dyson, I hope this video helped you choose or skip this one. So buy it if I didn't scare you off. Um, I think it's a great vacuum. All right, there you go. That's the Dyson V11 stick vacuum. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely click to clack that like button. And if you want to join the Adam Lucas family and you want to be a part of this crew, hit that subscribe button. Every time I get a subscriber, I get a boost to make more and more videos. And it's because of you guys, I surpassed 10K. Yes, people, on my way to 11K, but I need your help. Yes, you right there. Tell your friends, tell your family. This guy's on YouTube. They should go subscribe and watch my channel. But as always, I thank you for watching each and every one of my videos, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.